Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today let's paint an electric kettle. Although this time, not so much painting and more drawing, because every good painting starts with a good drawing. So let's get to it. Here you can see I have my reference on the left side, and I've created a layer group to contain all of my line art layers, and those are going to be color-coded orange. That's just going to help keep me organized. But here I'm going to be using a combination of two techniques. The first is drawing through the object, as in I'm envisioning it as if I can see all the way through the shape. And so cylinders show both the front and the back. So I could simplify at a very basic level and say this is pretty much the tea kettle. Now, of course, I would erase this at the end, but it helps me get my ellipses correct. And I can use free transform whenever I want to change these shapes. Now, another way to approach this is not to draw through, but to do visual measuring. And what that means is you are ignoring the fact that this is a kettle and you're just thinking one angle at a time. So if I want to add the spigot here, I would just look at the shape of the angle in my reference and then draw that angle into my image. And then I would draw another angle of the top and then another angle and keep drawing angles relative to one another. So you want to start with very light marks because you're going to be doing a lot of pushing and pulling. My angles are probably not going to be perfect the first time around. So I'm going to be doing a lot of erasing with this technique. And it's really nice to have some sort of visual references here. I can put in a center line, which is just going to be a useful guide for comparing symmetry and also for getting my angles correct. If you can envision one of these lines, you don't literally need to draw it onto your paper, but it can be helpful because you can always erase it. So for me, I like to think of form as three-dimensional shapes. So I am less a fan of visual measuring and more a fan of drawing through the object, envisioning it as sort of a clear form, and then erasing away what I don't need later. Either way is fine. The envisioning it as a 3D form and drawing through the object is good when you're envisioning your own shapes, although um, visual measuring is sometimes easier if you have good reference to look at. So they're just sort of different skill sets. But I am working with one shape at a time, not putting in too dark of lines, and I'm just looking at angles. I'm looking at the negative space between shapes. So for this handle here, I'm not just thinking of it as a handle. I'm also thinking about this sort of negative outline shape as well. Even if I'm not filling in the negative space, as in painting the background, I can still think of it as a visual shape. And it'll help me assess whether my positive shapes are correct. And what you're doing when you draw like this is you're just training your eye. You don't always necessarily draw this way when working in a sketchbook but this is forcing you to look critically. Really, more than even the brush technique, what I'm doing rigorously here is looking rigorously. The drawing is really secondary. I'm just looking at shapes and comparing my shape to the example, and then constantly refining to make sure those relationships are correct. So I might be considering, well, how is the width of this side compared to this side? In mine, is it correct? It's pretty close. I might line up where does the top of this sort of oval shape relate to this circle cutout. So I would do, check the same thing in my drawing. So I could say, well, maybe the circle should be a little bit higher there, or I could move this one a little bit lower. So it's a constant push and pull, and you're visually comparing one angle to another and as you get more angles laid into your image, you'll have the ability to be more and more accurate. In the next video, we are going to go into making a final line drawing. But for now, I think it's very important to take this stage seriously. What you're doing here is like creating the blueprint for a house. 
You don't want to rush into starting to saw boards and hammer nails. What you need to do is get the planning correct. Because once the planning is correct, you are going to have much more fun with the later stages of the painting. If you get your proportions wrong at this stage, it's going to be an uphill battle trying to fix it as you progress forward. And at this point, I'm happy with the rough. So if you want to draw like this, you have to understand the very basics of drawing from observation. We talked about using both visual measuring and also constructive form where we are drawing through the object. And if either of these are unfamiliar to you, make sure to follow the links at the bottom of the video and you can learn all about them. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.